Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for game week 10 where we look at what happened in game week 9 in the various leagues and then what my plans are for game week 10. Top scorer for game week 9 in the Midnight Mule FPL mini league was Daniel Norman with Super C goals. Obviously a Brighton fan, Brighton and Sussex. I was born in Sussex, hence no accent. So very happy with him being top scorer. 111 points. They managed that, or he managed that, with Salah 32, Sun and Embremo 14, Trippier 10, Alvarez 9, Gordon 8, Harland 8, Bowen 8, Burns 6. Very nice. And he got the bench right too. There's no points on the bench. As for top of the leagues, another Daniel. Daniel Chesters with Sack of Potatoes. With a 654 points in total, 110 for the game week. Their team was Salah for 32. Sun for 14, Watkins for 11, Trippier for 10, Madison 9, Alvarez 9, Fernandez for 7, Byrne for 6, and Vicario in goal for 6. Not many people have him in goal, but a real killer. Douglas Luiz on the bench for 15, but to be fair, which of those outfield players would you have played? Would you have benched rather than Luiz? Possibly Fernandez. I suppose possibly Darwin, actually. But still, very, very... Very good and top of the league. As for me, I'm down in 143rd, 94 points. Had Salah for captain for 32. Sun got 14. Watkins 11. Trippier 10. Madison 9. Pedro Porro 6. Darwin 4. So I was pleased about Darwin getting 4 because it was between him and I did bring in Simicast shortly before the deadline. Swapped him for Colwell. But I was always going to put him on the bench if I did buy him, which I know seems a bit silly, but that's the way it goes. I kind of thought he's going to go up in price. He is cheap. He's worth having. So that's why I got him. But that's OK. So 94 points just outside the half million for the game week rank. So a green arrow just outside, just inside 1.4 million. I'm nine points away from 1 million, but 152 from top spot, which is closer than last week. So that's nice. If I keep this up, I win the whole thing. 899 if you subscribe to this channel thank you very much to everyone who subscribes and likes etc on the fpl game week website you can look at the content creators league and fpl fran is currently top with 605 there are 14 people currently in the midnight mule mini league that have a higher score than 605 so that's pretty good and they should all be content creators but well done fran he's an excellent top chap to listen to as for me, I'm down in 42nd with nine, with 543 points, which is three two points ahead of Oscar, FPL Focal. He's a, he's a very good chap to listen to. He does some interesting videos every week. So my transfer options, I've got three options I'm considering this week. The first one is do nothing, and that's a very viable option. There's nothing I need to do. I haven't got any injured players. I can get out 11 very nice players. It's not a problem. Option number two, which is difficult, but I might do it, is selling Sun to getting Saka. Sun's the only realistic player I can sell to get Saka. Sun is very good. Their fixtures are OK. Arsenal, arguably over the next three, have slightly better fixtures than Tottenham. But Tottenham, I feel, have been playing so confidently recently and they're looking like they're going to score all the time Jesus is likely to be out so that's potentially fewer goals for Arsenal so I'm really unsure about this both of these are going to be popular as in their ownership and I suspect around the 1 million mark and even through content creators their ownership levels are going to be very very similar so I don't know I don't want to lose Sun but then I do want Saka another option this is option number three is Diaby's very, very good. He's got three lovely fixtures, but I may sell him for Saka. But to finance that, I'd have to sell Hoiberg, who's at home to Man City this week, which is fine. He would have been benched. But next week, he's at home to Luton. But I've had him for two or three weeks, and he's not performed yet. I think he will be good at some point this season. I think I will be buying him back if I do sell him. And I can swap him for Yao Pedro. So we'll look at how that looks shortly. But if I do nothing, this is how my team will look. I'll have Salah as captain. He gets to wear the old mule hat. 
there we go. And then his mate Simicast and Darwin, they're at home to Nottingham Forest, so that's very nice. I'd have Sun as vice captain away to Palace. Cash with his mates DRB and Watkins at home to Luton, so that's potentially nice points there. Ariola in goal at home to Everton. White at home to Sheffield United, but he'd be my only Arsenal player. And Matoma at home to Fulham. And then my only away player would be Trippier away to Wolves, but Trippier can get points anywhere. And then my bench would be Neto in goal at home to Burnley, which is quite a nice fixture. I'd have to bench Madison away to Palace, Hoyland at home to City, and Pedro Porro away to Palace. But if I do the second option, which was Hoyland and Diaby for Saka and Jao Pedro, then I would do that with the intention of bench boosting. So I would be putting out these 15 players, which is Neto and Areola. They've both got nice home fixtures. Then White, Cast, Simicast, Trippier, Pedro Porro, all got nice fixtures. In the middles, Matoma, Salah, Madison, Sun, Saka, happy with all their fixtures. And then Watkins, Darwin and Jao Pedro, they all have nice fixtures. And the thing with the bench boost is although it's the, in some ways, it's the highest scoring chip that we have because it can get you a lot more points. I also find it the most annoying chip <laughs> because it means the weeks leading up to it, you have to have pretty much 15 good players that are going to have good fixtures on a certain game week. Now, ideally, you should really use it in a double game week. You might be able to get 15 doublers out. That's 30 players. But it means you have to wildcard the week before or maybe the week before that. And then the week after, you're still going to probably have money on your bench. So a few weeks ago, I looked at all 38 weeks and I figured game week 33 and 36 looked good for a bench boost, ignoring double game weeks. 10 looked good and then 12 as well. So I did actually build this team thinking I may bench boost in 10 or 12. So I know it'd be the chip gone. I know other people will get more on their bench boost. So it means after this, I can start cheapening off some of my players and then it'd be easier for me to get Harlan back potentially in a few weeks. Although, assuming Salah goes off to AFCON, there's going to be lots of money there anyway. So at the moment, I'm really torn what I'm going to do but I seriously made bench boost. As for the picture, in case you were wondering, I like cats. I'm a cat person, not a dog person. And this week seemed like a good excuse to put up a picture of some cats. So there we have it. I might bench boost. I might not. I really don't know. But if prices change much, I may have to make the transfers sooner rather than later. Because if I go for the bench boost team, I've only got 0.1 million left in the bank. Let me know how crazy you think a bench boost might be. And I hope you have a very good game week 10. And I do read all your comments. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>